Welcome to T21 Mom. Hi friends, it's me, Mary, your T21 Mom podcast host. And today I thought I would try something a little different. It's kind of been on my heart for a little while. I've been thinking of doing kind of like mini episodes in between the regular episodes, kind of more about things that are on my mind or maybe what's happening or what's going to happen. You know, just, it's just a conversation with myself, essentially. And I thought I would try it out. And, you know, maybe you guys will like it. I don't know, but you can always let me know. You know, just something kind of casual and just, I guess, maybe a little bit intimate, a little bit about me. You know, I recently, we joined Challenger Baseball and I was going to try to join last year and I couldn't find a team and it's a pretty short uh, season. So I never found anyone. So anyways, this year though, I, I did find a team and it's actually really close. It's like a five minute drive. It's so close. It's awesome. Like, have you heard of it? I am loving it. We've gone maybe three or four times now. And, you know, I think Ainsley is starting to, to love it as well. You know, and all the volunteers, they are just so awesome and patient. And at one of the games, I was going to help Ainsley. I can't remember what she wasn't complying to. And uh, the volunteer told me to sit down. She goes, no, mom, we got it. And I thought that was just, so awesome and it's was a time to kind of connect with some other parents and it's for kids of all disabilities not just down syndrome although there's a lot of kids with down syndrome there and all ages it's it's awesome and the best thing is it's free like how awesome is that and you know they provide all the volunteers they get a uniform and all we have to do is show up You know, we're always a few minutes late, but they, you know, practice some catching and throwing and they're just so patient. Like Ainsley will run to the first base and that's pretty much it. I think only on the first day when I ran with her, did she run the whole way around, (laughs) but it's all good. They practice throwing with her on the sidelines and, and catching and she's, you know, doing awesome. And, you know, our physio Brenda, she's the one who actually has talked to me about Challenger Baseball because she's a big proponent of it. She's a big believer of it. And, you know, I told her it's during our physio time. Can we hold our spot? And she said, of course. So that's fantastic. I'm always a little hesitant to kind of stop therapies. I know some people stop during the summer, but I'm always worried that we won't get our same spots when we start up again in September. So we just carry on year round, you know, which is okay. I think it's good for routine for Ainsley I think but you know it's just all I can say is the Challenger Baseball is fantastic it's sponsored by the Toronto Blue Jays so everything is free like everything I I'm not sure what it's called in the states I do believe in some places it's called Challenger as well and and maybe even Miracle League I I'm not 100% sure on that but you know, if you're able to just join, it doesn't matter that it's midway through the season, just join. Everyone will welcome you with open arms. They'll be happy to see you and happy to see your child. And it's fun. And finally, the weather has gotten better here. So I'm, I'm more uh, okay with sitting outside, you know, because it's really been the rain's been really bad here this past year. It's been pretty wet and pretty miserable. I think even for a lot of us diehard Vancouverites, excuse me, we're pretty much done with this, this weather, but it went from one extreme to another. It's very, very hot for us, but thankfully we got air conditioning this year. So I'm quite glad about that. And something else I'm kind of excited about is I'm going to try to grow a few vegetables this year. We'll see how it turns out. I thought we would try to grow some lettuce and zucchini and hopefully some basil because I bought a basil plant from Costco and I I killed it within the first week because I didn't water it every day. But I've learned. (laughs) Dennis laughs at me because I seem to kill a lot of plants. But, you know, we'll try. I'll try my best. And I'm just looking forward to starting up the barbecue again. And I'm looking forward to having our, our 
Zoom group uh, barbecue, probably at the end of July again this year. It was so much fun last year. I loved it. And I just kind of look forward to hang out on the patio and, you know, Ainsley's got a little pool that we'll set up for her and that she really loves to hang out in and cool off in. So I'm just, I'm kind of looking forward to summer, I think, this year. Just this year seems to have gone really fast, it seems. And then this past weekend, it was Mother's Day, you know, and in some ways, I kind of have a little bit of mixed emotions about Mother's Day. You know, it used to be such a hard day for me. You know, I was so thankful for my mom. But in the last few years of her life, she had Alzheimer's. So she was quite a different person. She knew who I was. Uh, but it was just different, you know, and I really, I really missed her those last few years of her life and, and who she was. And, and she passed away the year before I had Ainsley. So, you know, she never got the chance to, to meet her, but, you know, past mother's days were hard because I really just, I really wanted to be a mom like so bad. And everyone around me was having kids. My, my siblings were having kids and it just seemed so unfair. And, you know, I tried for several years with really no success. And then on mother's day, 11 years ago, I told my family I was pregnant and I was on my own. And it was also the first mother's day that we had with out our mom because she had passed away the year before and it felt weird telling you know my my brothers that I was pregnant and I wasn't really sure how they would react to that news you know because I'm on my own but they were really supportive of me and they actually congratulated me so which was great you know once I said it, it it was over I actually couldn't even say it it was my sister-in-law who finished the sentence for me I was trying to get the words out and then she said are you are you pregnant <laughs> I said yes but you know two days later I I got a call from my doctor that I needed to come in and I knew it wasn't good it couldn't be good and that's where I learned that I had a one in five chance of my baby having down syndrome or some other try try some me I don't really remember that conversation much and thankfully my good friend Jill came with me to that appointment I I just don't I don't remember much until after them telling me about my one in five chances you know and I just kind of felt like my life was over and I kind of had a feeling like even though I still had an 80% chance that everything was good I just had a feeling that my baby would have Down syndrome. And, and I remember one night praying, praying so hard for my baby to not have Down syndrome. And then I realized praying at this point isn't going to do anything. My baby either has it or doesn't. And, you know, a few weeks later I had an amnio and that's when I learned that, yes, indeed, my my baby, I didn't know if uh, it was going to be a boy or a girl that my baby was going to have <clears throat> Down syndrome. And, you know, I just think back to then. And, you know, I, like I said, I kind of thought my life was, was over. I mean, I had already been prepared to be on my own for my life as a single parent. And I especially thought I'd be alone having a child with, a disabilities. I mean, I couldn't meet anyone before having kids. So what's the chance of me meeting someone now and with a, a child with some extra needs? But, you know, I can't, I couldn't have imagined our life now, honestly. You know, our life is good. You know, I met Dennis and, you know, he absolutely loves and adores Ainsley. 
he treats her as if he she's his own own child and and I love that and I kind of think it's because of Ainsley that that we met you know and we live in a beautiful home and Dennis supports me and all my crazy ideas and ventures you know whenever I do the farmer's market he's out there like at packing up you know unpacking the tables and you know putting all the cookies out and and you know and he helps and supports me in in all those ventures and you know puts up with me while the house is a total disaster as I'm doing all this baking you know and I I just I think it's wonderful and and yesterday with it being Mother's Day you know it was such a lovely day it was beautiful out and he he took us all for a lovely brunch you know including his mom Nona as we call her and his son Michael and his nephew who's living here right now Daniel and it was a buffet so Daniel was very excited about that because he's actually a really big guy I think he's 6'5 and I don't know 250 pounds or something but uh he he ate for all of us and Dennis definitely got his money's worth with the buffet and it was just lovely and you know he got me some nice flowers that he said were from Ainsley and just you know just thoughtful and you know I came home and had a nap on the couch which I like to do and we just sort of hung out and then later we went to the park and you know it was just a really simple nice day it was really wonderful and and I hope all you mamas had a nice and meaningful day as well you know being a mom it's hard you know, and add in special needs, and it's way harder, but we are doing it. And we got about another, I don't know, month and a half of school. I think for a lot of you in the States, school's getting out pretty soon. I think you you get out at the end of May. And we've had a lot of behavioral issues with Ainsley at school. There's been a lot of hitting and back to the hair pulling, and I just... I don't know anymore what to do. I have our behavioral consultant who's hopefully going to go in hopefully this week or very soon and to try to figure out what is causing this. I, I do think it might be some behavioral issues, but it's our, our sort of communication issues. It's just so random, you know, that I don't see anything happening specifically beforehand that, she, that causes her to do it. And And it's frustrating and I worry that she'll literally have no friends left of the few that she has, you know, because no kid, no matter how understanding they are, wants to be hit or have their hair pulled, you know, and school just in general has been hard and exhausting and I don't even really know what she's learned this year, if anything, it's just, I don't know, I don't even know anymore and, you know. She's a grade five this year, so we got two more years of elementary school. And then is on a high school, which is scaring me to death of what that is going to look like and what kind of support, if any, that she's going to have there. You know, the teachers at her school have been lovely. You know, I think most of them have never taught a child with Down syndrome. So we have those kind of challenges as well. You know, we had another new EEA this year, but I did hear through daycare, not from the school, that she said if this hitting continues that she may not be able to work with her anymore. But I look in the communication book, they don't say anything about that. They they might mention the hitting, but they sort of mention it as like a side note. So like, how am I supposed to know if no one is directly telling me? You know, I did get a call from the principal when I saw the the name of the school come up on my phone I thought oh this can't be good you know so I knew that it was serious then and the principal actually went in and and watched I think she said for two hours and she said Ainsley struck her EA 16 times and kids four times I don't know if they were hard hits because she'll hit sometimes but it's not really it's almost like a tap but again no one should have that happen to them if they don't want it to like a tap or obviously not a hit so very very uh frustrating and hard so if anyone has any suggestions please let me know because I really don't know what to do anymore 
you know, we had a new, she has a new EA this year. She had another new EA last year. And I'm beginning to think next year we're going to get another new EA. So, I mean, I don't know. I guess I'll find out at the end of the year. But, you know, and I just wish her communication skills were better, you know, so that she could tell me more about what's going on at school and and more about her frustrations and, you know, I guess even what's challenging for her there. It's, it's so hard. And, you know, I have... I have a lot of grief over that, that, you know, I still need to work on. I think I need to listen to the episode with Rose Reef again, uh, because there were some great tips in there on how to manage, you know, kind of the ongoing grief of our kids. You know, I do find it kind of ebbs and flows. Some days are harder than others. And, and I might go a long period where I don't really have any so-called grief, but I'm finding as she gets older and the gaps get wider and, you know, the kids are maturing and starting to kind of do more of their own thing. And it's not really necessarily cool to, to hang out with the so-called different kids. So it's, just really hard sometimes on this on this mama's heart and I guess part of me I have to accept that that kind of grief is always kind of going to be there you know it kind of rears its ugly head every once in a while and and it's and it's just hard but anyways these are just a few of the things that have kind of been on my heart lately and I just wanted to share and I just want you all to know that you're not alone. I'm right there in the trenches with you. You know, just remember that social media, although it's a great thing, for the most part, people are only putting their best foot forward, right? They're only showing you all the good stuff, the happy stuff, not necessarily the hard stuff. And Sometimes it's just good to know that there are people going through the hard with us. You know, it's it's good to have people who understand you and who know what you're going through. And, you know, just to even lend an ear sometimes, because sometimes that's all we need is just someone to listen. No judgment, just to listen and to, you know, offer a little bit of encouragement. So I hope that you liked this little mini episode I think it's episode I'm not sure 94 95 and you know I look forward to sharing next week's episode with you as well and you know thank you for giving me this space to share kind of what's on my heart and as always I would love to hear from you let me know what you thought of this little mini episode do you want to hear more I'll I'll try to do one every week but in between the regular episodes as much as I can some will be shorter and some will be longer and you can drop me a line at my email at info t21mum.com you can also find me on Facebook under t21mum or I'm also on Instagram and Twitter at trisomy 21 mama tell me your stories what's going on in your life what's important to you so keep on loving on your rocking kiddos and i'll see you next time